Now we are going to look at another class of formulas that polynomial time algorithm, which is called XOR set. What is XOR set? It's a conjunction of XORs of literals. Right? So here's an example. You have conjunctions, and instead of clauses, you have XORs of literals. Right? We call it XOR set. Since exhausts are negations of equality, we may eliminate variables via substitution. And for a variable p, uh, formula g, and a formula f, if you have this kind of situation that p, xor g, and f, what you can do is you can replace in f this not g. It will give you equisatisfiable formula. And we will use this fact to eliminate one variable after another our, our formula and obtain true or false at the end and we get to know that the formula is set or unset. Let's look at an example and here I have a four XORs uh, conjuncted and let's see. First I'll try to eliminate P. So P occurs in the first clause and we will say P is equal to negation of this formula. right? So uh, when you negate a, an XOR, this not is goes into one of the parts and so you get not R XOR S. Now you have this equivalence and what you do is put this here in wherever P occurs, here and here and we obtain this formula. Now you can see that S and not S are repeating, they will produce uh, 1 bit and one bit just introduces a negation in the chain of XORs so therefore you have to do a not Q here here you have a not R and not R that means you have a repeating ones or repeating zeros then they just be ignored and we obtained the following simplified formula now we eliminate one more variable and that variable let's choose to be R okay. we pick a definition let's say we pick a definition from let's say from here and we get r is equal to not of q so where do we uh, get uh, the place we substitute this thing we can substitute here and that's the only place when you do the substitution we're left with this you have a double negation q and this q and this q are same bits and therefore they get uh, not and then you get with the s and s xor not q we can further eliminate, let's suppose we eliminate Q, we have a Q equal to S. Okay? Then we just put that in and then we obtain with S. This is the only variable left and we can assign it to true. So we, we can, what we can do, we can say, okay, now my, I am left with only S, we can assign it to 1. Since Q is equal to S, then we can assign to 1. Now since R is equal to not of Q, we will assign to 0. And P is equal to the not R X or S, therefore it's assigned to zero. This is the way you can solve X or Z. This method may be very, very familiar to you because this method is actually Gaussian elimination, and uh, an X or is somehow acts like addition in the binary world, and therefore the method like Gaussian elimination works here. Now let's consider another class of formulas which is called Horn clauses and these clauses can also be solved pretty efficiently. So let's see what are those. Horn clauses is a clause that has the following form that uh, you have many literals and one literal occurs in a positive way. Okay? And it may be the case there is no such literal is positive all are negative okay? that is allowed also. A Horn formula is a set of Horn clauses which is interpreted as conjunction of the Horn clauses. The clauses with false literals, meaning basically this guy is false and everything is negation, are called goal clauses and others are called implication clauses. Okay? And the claim here is these guys are very efficient to solve. So let's look at an example. You have uh, Horn clauses, you can have one positive literal and everybody, nothing else. One positive, everybody else negative, and one positive, one negative, one negative, nothing positive, three negatives, nothing positive. So that's that's what you get. 
there is a different view of a home club you see that you have all negative right you can just and then there's a one positive what you can do is that you can turn this into this form you can say that p1 p2 p3 pn their conjunction implies q if you, all of them are made true i.e all of them made false then q has to be made true what we can do we can translate all our horn clauses into this form if there are no negative laterals in your uh, clause then you can translate your horn clause into true implies p okay. and otherwise you have uh, three on the left hand side one in the right hand side and similarly everywhere you go okay. in the case of you have a goal clauses when there is no positive lateral then the right hand side is false and then you say r implies false and then you have p q and t and then this is a different way of writing the same set of on clauses but it explicates what exactly the intention here if left side, uh, left hand side becomes true then the right hand side has to be made uh, true so how do we solve that let's suppose you have implication clauses okay H's and the goal clauses. Okay, so you have two sets of clauses. You got some sets of implication clauses, uh, uh, goal clauses, and they are written as an implication form. Okay, initially you put all the variables to zero, then you pick one implication clause from your set of implication clauses which is not yet satisfied by your current model. How this can possibly can happen? Okay, so that can happen only way then all the left hand side in the implication p1 to pn has been made true but the p was not made true so then you when you do you set p to true and then move forward right and in this process some point of time all the guys in the left hand side become true then you have found a situation then uh, that is wrong and then you have a unsat in your hand otherwise you can continue and if you finish with satisfying all implication clauses without violating any of the goals, you are done, you return M. 